Alzheimer's disease is a chronic neurodegenerative disease with a progressive course in which the death of neurons in some brain areas leads to a gradual and irreversible loss of cognitive functions. Alzheimer's is the most common form of dementia and the most widespread neurodegenerative disease in the world, followed by Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Alzheimer's predominantly affects people over the age of 65, with an incidence among women almost two times higher than men. It is good to remember, however, that this is not a normal consequence of natural aging, but a complex and multifactorial neurodegenerative disease that presents with a series of very specific signs and symptoms. Generally, we tend to divide the evolution of Alzheimer's into different phases. In this video, we will talk about the prodromal phase and the initial phase of the disease, that is those early forms in which the first alarm bells begin to appear, which however are often ignored or attributed to other causes. But what are they? Let's go see them. Memory Problems One of the first warning signs of Alzheimer's disease is memory loss with a tendency to forget recently learned information. This is because those brain areas involved in short-term memory are damaged. That is that part of memory that is responsible for storing a small amount of information for a short period of time, usually estimated at around 20 seconds. In the prodromal phase of Alzheimer's, we therefore begin to ask the same questions several times and repeat the same things. We forget where we have just placed our keys or glasses and then often accuse family members or third parties of having taken them. You forget conversations or events that happened recently, such as what you had for breakfast and have difficulty acquiring new information. That telephone number you just heard or that name of a person you just met are some examples of information that tends to quickly disappear from the mind as it cannot be stored correctly in short-term memory. As the disease progresses, we realize that we have to rely more and more on some memory aids, such as electronic devices, reminders, or on family members to remember things that we previously managed on our own. In the prodromal phase of Alzheimer's disease, however, the symptoms are not so evident and family members often tend to notice them first. Friends, work colleagues, the people surrounding the patient. In the intermediate and advanced phases of the disease, however, which we will see better in another video, the symptoms worsen and long-term memory is also compromised. Spatial and Temporal Disorientation Spatial and temporal disorientation refers to a condition of confusion and mental disorder in which one has difficulty understanding one's position in relation to the surrounding environment and correctly perceiving time and the temporal sequence of events. Having doubts about which way to get home, forgetting where you are or how you got there, are all symptoms related to spatial disorientation. Having difficulty perceiving the passage of time, being confused about the current day, month or year, or a lack of awareness of seasonal changes, are symptoms linked to space-time disorientation. According to the results of some studies conducted, both spatial and temporal disorientation in Alzheimer's disease are linked to the degeneration of the same neural pathways that connect the hippocampus with the superior parietal cortex and the posterior cingulate cortex in the right hemisphere. Language and Comprehension Problems the brain degeneration that characterizes Alzheimer's has a significant impact on communication, as those brain areas involved in language and verbal comprehension are damaged. In the initial stages of the disease, one may experience slight difficulty in formulating complex sentences and finding the right words during conversation, 
so much so that one tends to designate objects using generic expressions, such as this, or resorting to gestures or sounds, rather than specific names. This symptom can lead the patient to stop in the middle of the conversation without knowing how to continue. The difficulty in organizing one's ideas and communicating one's thoughts to others prevents those who suffer from it from being able to fully express what they would like to say, creating a sense of frustration and discomfort for both the patient and his interlocutors. The disease can affect not only the ability to express oneself verbally, but also the ability to understand spoken and written language. Difficulty understanding the meaning of words and sentences prevents you from correctly following a conversation or understanding a simple instruction booklet. This deficit in naming objects and finding words to communicate with others is indicated with the medical term anomia considered a specific form of aphasia. The latter indicates an acquired language disorder that leads to the partial or total loss of the ability to express and understand verbal and written words. The result of some studies has found that in the initial stages of Alzheimer's disease, what is called anomic aphasia is more frequently encountered, in which the greatest difficulty is found in recovering the names of people and common objects. Difficulty coordinating movements and planning. Alzheimer's disease not only affects cognitive functioning, but also the body's motor skills. We talk about apraxia, a neuropsychological disorder of voluntary movement that makes it difficult or impossible to perform motor tasks such as eating, writing, or dressing. Among the forms of apraxia most frequently found in the initial stages of Alzheimer's, we find ideomotor apraxia and ideational apraxia. In the first case, as the name itself suggests, we feel a difficulty in carrying out movements that we have conceived or planned. This means that those who suffer from it are able to mentally represent the action to be performed, but are not able to translate it into a coordinated motor action, consequently preventing it from being performed. In other words, he knows what he has to do, but he doesn't know how to do it. Some typical examples of ideomotor apraxia are difficulty in using cutlery during meals, brushing your teeth or combing your hair, but also in imitating the gestures and movements of other people. In the case of ideational apraxia, however, the patient has difficulty planning and organizing movements in the right temporal succession. This means that he is unable to mentally represent the action to be performed and therefore may make errors in movements or use the available objects inappropriately. For example, if he is given a screwdriver, he might try to write with it thinking it is a pen or try to calm his hair with a toothbrush. The symptoms of apraxia vary greatly from person to person and can occur even in the most advanced stages of the disease. In the next videos, which you will find as soon as they are available by clicking above, we will see what are the characteristic symptoms of the intermediate phase and the final phase of Alzheimer's disease. In conclusion, we have seen that Alzheimer's not only affects memory, but also the ability to speak, understand, and spatial and temporal orientation. It is good to remember, however, that having small lapses of memory or brief forgetfulness, which are remembered after a few minutes, or getting lost in unfamiliar places, or occasionally getting confused about the day of the week, does not necessarily mean having Alzheimer's or any other form of dementia. It happens to everyone in life, and it is normal to have moments of confusion, especially in stressful situations or when you are tired. The problem arises when these episodes become frequent or if they occur together with other symptoms of cognitive decline. Promptly recognizing the first signs and symptoms of the disease is essential to be able to intervene early 
and improve, as far as possible, the management and evolution of the disease.